Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language and machine learning. So in this video I'm going to show you how to create a program that can predict the price of Google stock for a specific day or at least attempt to. And now currently I'm on Google's website called colep.research.google.com because it makes it easy to start programming in Python. So that means that you do not have to install Python into your computer. Just go to this website and log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So to get started writing this Python code, you're going to want to click on file and then click on new notebook and a new tab will open up for you and then a new cell will open up for you. Now in this cell, I like to put in some comments about the program. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put in a description about the program. So this program predicts the price of Google stock for a specific day. Okay, next I'm going to create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left and I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout this program. So from sklearn.svm, I'm going to import svr and then I'm going to import numpy as mp and I'm going to import pandas as pd and then I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and I'm going to give that plot a style so I'm going to type plt.style.use and I'm going to use the seaborn dash dark grid. Okay, now I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left and just give it a little time. Okay, so I got an error message and that's because I have misspelled it looks like um, pi plot here. Okay, so I'm going to run this again and now everything seems to work. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, I'm going to load the data. So from google.colab, I'm going to import files. And then I'm going to create a variable called upload it and set it equal to files.upload. And then I'm going to run this and then click on choose files. And I'm going to use that file there. So let's go ahead and open it. And let's create a new cell. And in this cell, I'm going to store and look at the data. So I'm going to create a variable called df, which is short for data frame, and set it equal to pd.read underscore csv. And I'm going to input the name of the file, which is g-o-o-g all caps underscore capital S T O C K dot csv. Okay, and then I want to show it, so I'm just going to type df and let's run this cell. Okay, and now I can see the data that's in that file. Okay, so I can see my columns. They are the date column, the open price column, the high price column, low price column, close price column, adjusted close price column, and volume. Okay, now the idea for the program is to create three, three models, three machine learning models, okay, that will be trained on this data from index 0 to index 19 and then we're going to kind of test the model just a little bit and we're going to test it to see if it can predict the price value for that last row. So I'm going to input the day so in this case the day will be 30 and then it's going to try and predict the adjusted close price which is here. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a new cell now in this cell, I want to get the, well, I want to get and print the last row of data. Okay, so I'm gonna create a variable called actual underscore price, and I'm gonna set it equal to df dot tail, and then input the value one, and then let's go ahead and take a look at actual price. So actual underscore price, and let's run this. Okay, and now I can see that I have that last row of data stored in actual price. So let's create a new cell now that we got the actual price. And now I want to prepare prepare the data for training. All right, so let's go ahead and get off the data except for the last row of data. So I'm going to create, or not create, I'm going to set df equal to df.head. And I'm going to get the length of our data frame minus that last row of data. Okay, and then let's go ahead and show the new data set. And let's run this. Okay, so now we can see this new data set. It has all of the rows from index 0 to index 19, where the original data set had rows from 
0 to 20. Okay, so that last row of data is gone. All right, so this is all the data that I want to train the models on. And I'm not sure if I said earlier um, that I was going to do three models. I think I did say I was going to do three models, but there will be three models within uh, this video here to train the data on. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, I want to create an empty list to store the independent and dependent data. So I'm going to create a variable called days and set it equal to list. And then I'm going to create another variable called adjusted underscore close underscore prices and set it equal to list as well. And let's go ahead and run that. And let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, I'm going to get the I'm going to get the date and the adjusted adjusted close price. Okay. So I'm going to create some variables. It's going to be df underscore days. And I'm going to set that equal to df dot lock. And I'm going to get all of the rows from the column called date. And then I'll create another variable called df underscore adjust underscore close. And I'm going to set that equal to df dot lock. And I want all of the rows from the adjusted close price column. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, I'm going to create the independent data set. So for day and df underscore days, I'm going to append to the days list. So type days dot append, and I'm going to append that day. So I need to use the split method on the slash, and then I want just a day, which is at index one, and then I want to convert this to a integer. So I'm going to cast it to an int here, and because the training data is expecting a an array when training I need to put my square brackets here okay so the training data needs to be in this form all right for the independent data set next I want to create the dependent data set so for adjusted underscore close underscore price and df underscore adjusted close price I want to append to the adjusted close prices list so just type adjusted close prices list dot append and I'm going to append the adjusted close price all right and then I want to cast this to a float and that looks good so let's go ahead and run this Okay, uh, the problem seems to be that this needs to be priced. So let's run this again. All right, there we go. So that looks good. And let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now let's create the three models. So they're going to be three support vector regression models. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create and train a support vector regression model using a linear kernel. All right. So I'm going to create a variable called lin underscore SVR, and I'm going to set it equal to SVR, and the kernel will be equal to linear, and the C value will be 1000.0, and then I need to train this model, so just type lin underscore SVR dot fit and we're going to input days and then input the adjusted close prices. All right. Now the other two models will be support vector regression models as well. So I'm just going to copy this using control C highlighting it and using control C and I'm going to paste that two more times and just change a few things. So now instead of using a linear kernel here, I plan on using a polynomial kernel. So I'm going to change this variable here to poly. And I'm going to change the kernel to poly. And it needs a degree. So I'm going to set the degree equal to 2. And then I'm going to change this here to poly as well. All right. 
and then the last model will be a or will use a RBF kernel and I'm going to change this to RBF and change the kernel to RBF and then I'm going to give this a gamma so I'm going to set gamma equal to 0 0.15 and then let me change this right here to RBF and let's go ahead and run these models and see if they are uh, let's see if we have any errors let's see if they will be created okay so it looks like we do have some errors here and that's fine so what I need to do is I need to go back up here I need to rerun this and I need to rerun this and I need to rerun this and now if I run this it should all be gone so let's see all right so that's basically it um, okay so let's create a new cell and now in this cell I want to plot the models on a graph to see which has the best fit to the original data. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type plt.figure to give my figure a figure size. So the figure size will be 15 by 7. And then I'm going to plot the actual data. So just type plt.scatter. And we're going to input days and then input the adjusted closed prices. And I will give it a color. So the color will be black. And then I want to give it a label. So the label will be original data. Okay. Next, I'm going to plot the model, or at least one of the models. So I'm going to type plt.plot and then input days. And then I'm going to input, we we'll do the RBF model first. So RBF underscore SVR. And then put dot predict. And it's going to try to predict the price based on the days. And then I want the color to be equal to green. And the label, the label will be equal to, I'll do RBF model. Okay, now I'm just going to copy this here and paste it two more times and just change a few things. So the next model will be the polynomial model or really the SVR model with a polynomial kernel and the color will be orange and this will have a label called polynomial okay all right and then last but not least is the linear uh, the linear kernel the SVR model with the linear kernel so that's lin underscore SVR and I'm going to change the color to purple. And I'm going to give it a label, linear model. All right. Next, let's add a legend. So type plt.legend. And then let's show the plot. So just type plt.show. And let's run this. And hopefully there's no errors. OK, so again, we're getting errors. So it looks like here I put a um, an extra character that shouldn't have been there. So let's run this again. And let's see what's going on here. All right, so it looks like I'm misspelling all over the place. So this needs to be purple. Let's run this. And now everything looks good. So if I look at this graph, you can see that the model that seems to be doing the best, that best fits the data, is the RBF model. So you can see it's almost hitting every single point here. But it does miss this point down here. All right. But out of these three models, that's the model that seems to, to be doing the best. Now on the y-axis here, is the or are the values for the uh, value for the stock so in USD so this is the adjusted close price on the y-axis and on the x-axis is the or are the days okay so this would be day 15 day 5 um, there is no day 0 but there's a day 1 so you can see all that here all right okay so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now in this cell, let's really see how well um, these models did, right? Because just by looking at this graph here can actually be very much so misleading, all right? That doesn't mean that the RBF, the RBF model is actually better than these other two models, just that, you know, for the training data set, it seems to be doing much better, all right? So let's really kind of test this, this, um, this model, or actually all three of these models, 
and let's see what we get back. So remember the idea was to basically give our models a day, so in this case the day 30, and then see if it can predict the price for that day. All right, and we actually have the actual price stored in in a variable called actual price. All right, so here we're going to show the predicted price for the given day. All right, so I'm going to set day equal to 30. And then I'm going to print the RBF SVR predicted. And let's see what it predicted. So we're going to say RBF underscore SVR dot predict. And we're going to input day. And I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it two more times. And of course, just change it a little bit. So the next one will be the linear um, SVR model. And the last one will be the polynomial SVR model. OK, so I need to change this here to lin. And it changed this here to poly. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And now we can see that the RBF model actually did the best out of the three models to predict the price. And let's take a look at the actual price. Okay, so here we're going to print the actual price. So just type print and then the actual price. And I'm going to put actual actual underscore price uh, from the adjusted close price column at index 20. All right, and let's run this. All right, and we see that the actual price was 1,117 USD or about 1,117.949951 1, USD. And the RBF model predicted the price to be 1,112 USD um, which is really close, right? So it's only off by about $5 or so. $5 and something cents. So that's really not bad. That's pretty good, actually. But again, it's not always the case that, that um, you know, this matches up, right? What we see in the graph and what the model predicted. And on top of that, you would want to do a lot more testing on this and uh, use other uh, testing metrics as well to really test your models and see how well they perform. Now, I have another video that's very similar to the one I've done today, and it will actually show you the uh, the difference. It will show you a difference between what the graph shows to be the best model and what model was best for predicting the value. OK, so anyways, that's basically it. I think I went through this pretty quickly. I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you found it helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. If I don't get to them, maybe others will. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it and hit that like button and become a subscriber to my channel. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.